very good afternoon good evening good morning from wherever you are in the world namaste from india my name is amit malhotra i am founder co-founder of the wfm media and also mccoy as a parent group welcome all of you for this uh, interesting session on curtain walls tests and standards this might sound very boring to you trust me it will not be boring so if you want to leave this video session right now don't have patience <laughs> we'll make it interesting uh, we have some amazing uh, i won't call them panelists i will call uh, everybody sitting in different places some are peaceful in an office douglas is driving his ferrari uh, right now <laughs> we don't know that but just uh, so that we're on the same page i'm going to just introduce uh, you to everybody uh, so here's the first i won't call presenter but i would say the person on the panel anish bakar he's sorry he's a well known person in the industry his picture just went away somewhere but he heads freedman dubai india i got he's got too much experience so i guess uh, that's good and bad <laughs> so from a perspective he's going to talk about the importance of project management and that's what freedman is very 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 well known for douglas uh, he works with heroes architects and engineers and while we were discussing with him he has Uh, a lot of disneyland toys because he worked for the disneyland project <laughs> and as well as uh, burj khalifa i actually found my uh, burj khalifa lying right here uh, one of the <laughs> friends had gifted it to me it just found it like uh, and he's been a key leader in quite a few very interesting projects uh, miguel ola miguel uh, he's a senior Hi, Ola. with asg he will talk a little bit more he's been with thomas de lisa Lucio Marfasanti still remember meeting him once a long long time ago and uh, that's a long time ago that maybe for uh, a war tower or I don't remember the I did meet him in Italy as well as in uh, in the US I think but that was a long time ago I one incredible Italian human being uh Raja I would not do the rest of the name Raja Rajamouni is fine he's the business head for Shobha projects Shobha is pretty much across India Middle East I don't know where else uh, Shoba is around. One of the most incredible facades have been built under Shoba, and uh, I guess he's managing a huge project in the UAE right now. And uh, then we have a young lady with us, Suzanne uh, Norid Dean. She's the principal facade consultant at Ramball. A lot of experience, a lot of education, a lot of practical experience in doing projects, and I think that's very important for us. So the, so the audience must know that the panelists, the people who are present here, have incredible amount of experience, and whatever they do, tell us today. Whatever we do, learn from them. My request: take it seriously, and at least listen to what they have to say. We'll try to keep it short and interesting. Uh, so with that, I'm going to stop sharing my screen, and I think Raja would probably share some slides with us, perhaps later. Yeah. So here's this. subject of curtain walls facades buildings so what's the biggest failure we have seen in a curtain wall project and why that's my first debate question and i'm going to start with suzan suzan over to you <laughs> hi um what well, the biggest failure i think is um the miscommunication and collaboration between the different parties involved in a project so it goes like from the contractor to um the consultant and the architects um and the client himself for themselves um so yeah the biggest failure would be um what i have experienced um in the past years is that um a lot of interface details where different traits are coming together um are not done proper uh, properly and um yeah that leads to um So failure why, of yeah operation of the building but why do you think that happened is it ego or is it everybody knows too much what is it i think it's um the time pressure i think it's the pressure of finishing um finishing up before you get approvals of um yeah and I, i don't want to point now at raj and the contracting side but uh, we know that contractors are under a lot of pressure uh, so are we and we are always trying to um, to um, basically we are like the the joint between um, two parties the contracting and the um, developers so um, yeah i think it's uh, 
major, majorly because of time pressure on site that you just try to finish it somehow before you actually get approvals or before you have the time to discuss um, with the with the parties who are responsible for each interface or the different trades who are involved. Anis, what would you like to say about that? Yeah, I I, I mostly tend to agree with what what Susan said specifically to the to the matter that. There was a big disconnect between between different parties, the mm -hmm. stakeholders, you know, and and two specific. I mean, we you asked the question that what is the biggest failure? You probably cannot say a biggest failure, but you can say the root causes of this yeah. failure. Similar, right? Uh, one matter that there are two specific matter I can I can think of. Is the first one is the the especially those failures are happening. Uh, because of there is certain kind of challenges in those projects. And, and, and one of the reasons that we could see is actually people are not really giving the initial thought process importance as much it require. The, from the, especially when you're having geometrically complex projects and all, you need to have a real study from the, 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 the point zero itself. You know, otherwise, what if you think that if you need a specialist, and if you think that uh, that that you are saving some cost on that, you end up paying it somewhere else. You know, this is this is a major matter that I would say that people are not really giving enough is it, thought. Is it, really, is it really is it really any money which is causing these problems? Yeah, this is, unfortunately, that is the case, uh, Amit, uh, because you know, if you if you talk about a big project, bigger values. And then uh, when you start connecting what you might need to pay to a specialist, at that point of time, when you see the volume, it looks like for them, it's a big one. But when you see the overall picture of the project, it is, it is very insignificant. You know, this is, this is what uh, the, 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 the situation is. So people are not really giving importance. And at, what happens is actually during the course of the execution, at certain point of time, it gets stuck at certain point of time. And then you, you spend on the time, then... I mean, there are there are cases where we know uh, you are almost in a in a certain level of execution. Now you see that there are challenges which was not really thought out in the initial stages. So you have to strip down back again, then start from. You know, these are all things that you might Is need it, to. Consider. Let me let me take this question to Miguel, as a from the contracting side. Is it still happening a lot? Has it come down, or the complexities have changed? Uh, I think it's still uh, it's still there. I mean, there is uh, clearly a gap uh, uh, between, uh, as Susan uh, was saying, developing and contracting. Uh, it happens that uh, during the developing, the the contractor is not involved. During the the contracting, mm -hmm. the designer is less involved. So there is a gap uh, of communication there, and uh, that leads to to, to future yeah. problems. But it's funny when you say that, that this is a known devil. Everybody knows that this is not what should be done. Let's talk to Douglas here, who has done, mm. led a project like the Burj Khalifa, which is iconic from every angle. And what yeah. went right, uh, Douglas, what went right in uh, Burj Khalifa? I think the, um, let's say in a more general way, yeah, because if I say something is uh, regarding any particular project that people will try to ping, uh, uh, finger pointing me, yeah, there's, uh, there's no, no good. But um, I, 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 I think the, um, the one of the fundamental issues is the expectation management to the client. Okay, so the, uh, the client is expecting more and more. And in order to feed the unlimited desire from the clients and then the, from any parties, they will try to squeeze the time cost and quality yeah so uh, so they want to have a shorter time they want to have a cheaper but they want to have the better quality but in the reality this will not happen yeah so this is like a three three circle together so if you want to be fast and you want to be cheap that the uh, the quality will not be that good yeah and vice versa those three things together if the, if you want three things together come to the end it's made impossible and you, if you want something to be impossible and things will start to be, use the word failure, and the other, and the, uh, and the people will try to be uh, finger pointing. Yeah, so uh, 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 the contractor doing it wrong and, uh, and the contractor and say, are uh, the consultants back wrong? And then, uh, and then uh, the consultant said, this, uh, uh, the architect draw this, uh, the, in, uh, the design intention, right? So when the failure is happening, 
that is the start of the people try to blame each other, try to get rid of their liability. And, the, and this is like a wicked circle. The more people try to blame to each other, the more people try to focus on themselves rather than the project. That's the time of starting the failure. Is what I, that I want to say the whole thing in, in general. So starting from the expectation management is wrong. And then uh, they are pointing uh, um, and then uh, people are thinking from themselves rather than the project. And then that's the start of a talk about the failure. So it's circling down to human tendency. So let's say Shoba is the client, the developer. Uh, yeah. We are all involved in this whole ecosystem. So Raja, what's your thesis on let's say projects which didn't go well? Yes, see, um, I would say we are a company with a backward integration. That means we are the client, we are the consultant, we are the main contractor and subcontractor. So I can put myself in the shoes of everyone uh, yeah. to manage, you know, uh, the priorities are different for each individuals sometimes. That is one of the reasons we have most of the companies in-house. See, today uh, the project complexity is also increasing. The specs are increasing. At the same time, there is a uh, skill shortage. Of course, we have the skill shortage. At the same time, at site, especially on the field, there is a productivity issues. On top of everything, there is a huge margin pressure. How do we secure the margin? That's very important because as um, uh, Douglas rightly pointed out, it is like, you know, uh, client want to pay less and they want the best. You know, you want a Rolls Royce, you have to pay. That's obviously it's not happening in the market. So performance failure is one of the major uh, end results like of the failure, I would say. I feel it is happening because of mostly the workmanship issues. If a project, there is a proper uh, facade consultant and uh, the right system is specified, the system has been used several times and it's been tested. But the same system with failing, it's just because of a project management issue or it's not been fabricated properly. That could be several reasons, you know. This is what I feel uh, the root cause. Now, we were having another session a couple of weeks ago or probably a month back and we were talking about BIM and we were talking about software. We were talking about uh, making sure that all the elements which are all known. Yes, Amit, Amit, Amit before you go to the next subject, uh, this particular subject, there is one more thing that I would like to emphasize on here, which is more related in the in the direction of the actually the facade contractor because because uh, Raj was actually mentioning about the testing matter and all that. You know the the what we see another disconnect is actually uh, you have a system, you have a fabrication process, you have an installation process, and uh, overall when you look because of the margin what Raj was talking, normally the facade contractors are actually on on the edge. So and and often what we see is actually you have you have a design well designed, but then what happens is actually people are not really skilled in the execution. Even if you say that you have done the testing, the testing testing team has got no connection to the fabrication and installation team. There is no clear verification happening between if the design is actually getting complied with the execution or not. Uh, you know, the when the design system, the system suppliers or even the and the companies who's having their own uh, systems, a screw instead of going straight, having a little bit turn or inclined is good enough to crack all your design aspects. You know, it will have the drainage issues and it will have the air infiltration. All these things will be there. But the proper training is also not really happening. So there is a disconnect on the execution side as well between all this department. I would say that this is also a very common reason, not for the geometrically complex project, even for the regular projects you see very often in the market. If I were to just circumvent to another, not a question, but a thought point that uh, projects like the Burj Al Arab, projects like the Burj Khalifa and many other projects have been, so for it looks like, executed to perfection with great results and uh, standing tall and <clears throat> I guess there must be some issues, but looks great and is functionally right. There must be lots of projects which are not there and there are lots of projects which are there. So the main difference in the two would be the connect. Yes. From what to execution, to testing, to final uh, audit. Yes, yes. Right? I would say yes. There are quite a lot of influence because of that. So just for the sake of our viewers, I guess everybody knows, I'm going to just ask one question and then we'll circle around that. Uh, Suzanne, we'll start with you again. 
the what's your what's your thought point on the main criteria between deciding a stick system and a fully unitized system i think the main point between these two is um the efficiency of um of both of those facade systems i mean unitized uh, the the name says it it's you're unifying the whole building into like one design process into one fabrication and installation process whereas your stick system is um yeah built on site and off site and all the quality issues which are coming with that and then of course like the um from the contracting part of um For, from the contracting side is um, do you have the capable um, contractor who is experienced in unitized curtain walls because surely the, your tolerances are different than the um, stick construction and uh, it depends if it's a tower if you can um, go into mass production of a couple of uh, standardized system you kind of unify them and then uh, just like quickly install them on the building or if you have like a lot of returns in the building where you um, yeah have a bigger design process when it comes to complex um, facades I mean you can have a unitized system with uh, where every panel is is different but you can still rationalize it or you can go into stick where um, yeah it's just like the whole process on site will make it um, yeah the process on site will um define of which one is more efficient one of them is quicker on site the other one is quicker in uh designing whereas then for unitized you can just you have to spend the um design time and then quickly install on site or you yeah have the time on site where you add in a stick uh, a stick would it be right to say anish that a stick system could have more possibilities of failure versus a unitized system or does it stand to be equal for both no i mean that depends actually what is the kind of i don't know what is the kind of failure that you're talking about is it related to the performance is it talking about the performance probably yeah, performance. Uh, you you need to really see what is the context and i i tend to agree with what zusan said probably i may add couple of things which has got a totally different context you know there are some markets there are some matured market where oh i'm not really calling as a matured market some market where labor cost is actually on the higher and and, and then even yeah. the material so in those markets uh, and and you know in the in the process of fabrication and installation the time that the labors are spending or the people who are fabricating are spending more effective in the factory than the site in the site you tend to lose a lot of time so market where the where the the manovers are on the high probably a, a, a fabrication at the at the, the fabrication at the factory is actually more appropriate so more cost effective in that sense i would say that unitized to panel is actually better in that context because you will have a better control happening and effectiveness in terms of the cost that will take place for unitized facade so that could be a criteria control uh, better control uh, the better better control and in turn what also happens is actually as susan said uh, quality is also getting better because the quality you have the facilities and and all the controlling system in place more in the in the factory than the site so you are getting better quality there that is one matter and another major criteria that i i might uh, emphasize is uh, in the in the stick system generally when you look you have tolerance you have difficulty to accommodate the tolerances you know for example if you are having the high cc thick area uh, or if you are having special cases between the slab you are having a substantial kind of slab reflection or the movement of of, of or, or anything of that sort then probably a unitized facade is actually much better compared to the the, the stick system of course stick system uh, has got its own uh, uh, its own merits Uh, at, at certain location in the geographical locations the, the the factories are not really equipped for producing the unitized panel and that could be one of the reason that you can select you can go for a stick system and of course the cost is a matter which i couldn't i couldn't solve for so long i've been in the industry people normally say the stick system is actually cheaper than the unitized facade i couldn't really understand what is the reason for it you can probably see material high in the unitized system compared to the stick system but when you start looking at the overall picture of the external access and the time that you spend in the site and all that stuff together i i i, can, I can't really see where the difference is coming i have no do you have to uh, what do you have to say miguel yeah i i agree with uh, with the 
two uh, uh, opinions in a way, but I would like also to make a quick the uh, difference between uh, unitized and bespoke systems. Uh, at the moment, uh, we see in the market that practically every system supplier, they have a standard unitized systems, uh, both uh, Australian or European system. Uh, that certainly they accommodate to the design intent, but they still uh, something is standard and is not 100% fully uh, following the design intent. Uh, meanwhile, a bespoke system that is what they maybe increase the cost is fully designed for, uh, for a specific project and it fully following the design intent and uh, it follows the performance. So it's not just a, a stick of unitized. There are more categories that we need to, to think oh, about. That's right. That's right. What I have learned, uh, I don't want to sound anywhere that somebody's going to come and kill me. That from my experience of knowing pretty much a lot of people in the industry, from manufacturers, fabricators, contractors, clients, that the more complexity you bring into what you speak is where the money lies. And the money lies in the complexity of how complex you want to make your English sound to give that effect, but that's being stupid. Douglas, your experience on this uh, stick versus unitized in terms of what do you think, what is your difference in so many years of your experience? I think it's um, the experts. Uh, what, what I will say, this is kind of the um, questions, the top 10 questions that you can ask when you talk about the curtain molding. So I'm, I'm guessing all the guests here, maybe they need to answer these questions maybe at least once per week. So, so yeah, everyone talk about the thing is uh, pretty much is the, it's the same as uh, what I'm thinking. So, but uh, uh, instead of talk about the advantages, advantage between the unitized and stick, I am what I'm trying to share with you a two days ago, what is the uh, a failure of uh, selecting a unitized curtain wall in a wrong way. Yeah, so I, uh, I am getting involved into a design of a, of a of a uh, of a tower in a in a airport. Okay, so you think of an airport, and then uh, you have a uh, one little tower at the top, and then you have all those control panel at the top. That that particular tower, that tower is uh, having on the top, which is the control panels location. That is having a surrounding like a like like a round shape of this of this glass, and eventually that is kind of maybe twenty or twenty five panels. And then they're inclined, go like this. And then uh, this is not a round shape. It is like a oval shape. So eventually what it means is that all those uh, angles between all those mountains is look different. And uh, these 20 panels, which is the uh, 20 panels out of the hundreds, uh, thousands of the other panels in the other location, they are specifying as a unitized curtain wall. So that is uh, you are specifically making a standard curtain, uh, unitized curtain wall for that particular 20 panels. Uh, so first of all, they are not standard dikes. Number two, they are only a one floor support, so they are not dealing with the uh, movement things. Number three is a uh, yeah, so uh, uh, everything is on the top. So this is um, this is to the control panel people, so it's the maintenance people. So they are not for the uh, 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 for the general public. So so uh, every contractor jump up and shout where why what why you are specifying this uh, unitized curtain wall at the particular locations, and the contractor and the consultant kind of like. Uh, uh, topless, you know, yeah. So, so I, so I think this story explained is uh, what's the, uh, what's the best scenario of uh, specifying a a unitized curtain wall. Yeah. So it's like a reverse of my of my story. That will be the best way of, of specifying it. You know. So it's the wrong product for the right application and vice versa, right? Correct. Yeah. 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 Everything right. does not apply anywhere. So Raja, what is your take? So many years of experience in this. I have to take uh, two standards here. Uh, as a fabricator's perspective, uh, you know, every fabricator prefer stick system, easy to fabricate and you can do it faster. And installation perspective, definitely it's going to be a unitized system. I have few slides uh, since you took up this. Uh, sure. Let me see if I can share my yeah, screen. I'm, just, I'm just going to give you the rights to share screen. Yeah. One. You can see my screen. One minute, I'm just going to, I... uh, Tarun, can you uh, let Raja share screen, please? Achha, anyone can share screen. You can go ahead and start the screen, screen share. No, I've done it. Can you see that? Uh, 
not yet. No, not yet. No. Let me see. Just have to press and use the desktop to share. Okay. Share screen. Yeah. You can see now, right? Yeah. Okay. Is it clear? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Ah, subject. Interesting. Fine. See here. Uh, okay. It is. Uh, that's all come with the caveat. You know, depends on the situations. Uh, in general, uh, tech systems are applicable for uh, low rise buildings. Uh, and as uh, Douglas said, there is an exception for some complex shapes where it's uh, required. We can have there also uh, unitized panels. And the same time, uh, if it is a repetitive order and if it is um, at all high rise buildings, it preferably it's unitized pattern wall is better. Performance wise, it's purely, I feel it's based on the engineering and the design, how we do uh, most of, except the movement, as uh, Ani said, um, uh, most of the performance criteria can be met by both the um, stick as well as unitized systems. So this is an interesting area what you wanted to do, uh, look at it. These are the process uh, from the start of the engineering till the installation. When you see the first engineering shop drawings for stick cut and wall as well as unitize, it's almost taking the same time. And when we start the bracket installation, mostly unitized will have a casting channels, it will start. And then the raw material will be procured, which is the yellow line, where it, during the bracket stage itself, uh, you know, you get the raw material. And then comes to the fabrication. Here you can see the stick system uh, consumes very less time in terms of fabrication. No curing is required. You can cut the profiles and then put the connectors and send it to site. And site installations, you can see the extended time on the site operations. So, same time, when you look at the factory operations are more in the unitized curtain wall, but at the same time, site is less. Let's take another scenario here, like as a fabric, it's economics. If you see the moment I get the material in this yellow line, then I send to site, it, it's a long process in a unitized curtain wall. It's taking so long so that, you know, they have to sponsor and the glass has to come. Each and every screw has to be in place Without that, I cannot be able to supply. If we are working in a project with the time pressure where the frames can go, the glass can be supplied to site, sometimes it's preferably stick system. These are the logistics, the profile glass accessories, everything supplied to the site, not site, that's like uh, to the factory for unitized cut and wall. For a stick, it is like a uh, few things can come to factory as well as the site. And uh, for a thousand square meters, this will be the logistics approximately for including the glass for the stick cut mold. Let's say it takes six trailers and the unitized it could take 10 trailers. And the major problem with the selection criteria comes in the field quality control, how it's installed. The major installation activities are happening at the site for the stick. You will see that, for example, a guy who is uh, fixing a cap cut and wall, a one square meter, you should put almost eight screws minimum okay it varies system to system and assume somebody working in dubai in a summer time let's say 45 degree temperature where the surface temperature of the aluminum is around 60 65 and it is he is hanging on the cradle and fixing so many screws how do we ensure the uh, quality who can go and monitor it what is the productivity there is a huge gap so that that's the areas you know where unitized most of the things can happen in factory and installation if the bracket is aligned properly, it can happen at site. So there is a big disconnect. This will lead to a performance issues as well, apart from uh, the normal, you know, economics. But, <clears throat> thank you, Raja, for that uh, very simple white background plane explanation. But I guess everybody here knows to an extent that there are these plus points and I won't say negative points, but there are the reverse points for Stick versus curtain wall, but end of the day, I still feel while I'm just watching all of you listening to other people, and I can see at the back of your brain something, like, mm, you know <laughs> what? But having said that, I think my objective here, rather than our WFM community objective here, is to be able to spread the right message 
in terms of you don't want to talk about technology everybody knows about what technology in curtain walls is coming what's new and blah blah is that in a few words like uh, i want you to be a little candid uh, and you know you can be as straightforward as you like to be in yeah. terms of what do you request the client your client so everybody has a let's say for example from a consultant everybody is a client from a fabricator contractor everybody is a client and you the client are also telling something to your sub suppliers and vendors so idea is that you know what are the basic parameters that we should keep in mind consciously to make sure that we get a successful handing over of a curtain wall and making sure that some worries can be taken care of by somebody else so that the execution which is the most critical for human life safety and welfare can be taken care of uh, besides let's assume that the engineering is right the design is right <clears throat> then what is it that we must do as human beings to ensure we achieve a good success on a curtain wall facade done done well so let's say again suzanne starting from you what do you request everybody around here to say guys do your job okay do you want how do you want to, how do you want to put it to them <laughs> um well I do, if you're asking me this way then i would like to come back to um that point you said in the beginning where you mentioned that uh, it's not about ego today and um Douglas mentioned the expectations uh, the project expectations of the the client which uh, yeah is always rightly linked to um to to the money side of that so um i think what what, what i would hope for and where i don't have to see like um yeah fully molded um, rooms or buildings which are not operational because the facade has like major issue is um yeah just like partially also from our side from the facade consultant to raise the awareness and to have like a standpoint in uh, in front of the client and educate the client with his expectations or their expectations um what is um what what is going to happen after i mean yeah it's always a discussion of um how much um are my investment cost and what's about value engineering and my expectations of um x millions against the the product i'm getting or the building i'm getting um but there is always a but linked to it so it's um the awareness of what's going to happen um once it is handed over yeah so that's uh, partially to everyone who is involved the contractor to um yeah to have like a closer collaborations between the consultants and the contracting part and then the consultants to have like a stronger standpoint in front of the developer because that's why they hire us to um actually give our best interest and best input for um so to, if to i would ask you a very bad candid question how is yeah. it going so far with your client which is the developer listening to you how is it going so far for us yeah you said that the, you request the client and the developer to listen yeah. to you better how's it going so far is it going well <laughs> <laughs> it's it's, uh, it's it's getting better because um in the past 2 3 years where you could see uh, how rapid um especially here dubai or the uae is developing and how fast they have finished up projects and the uh, how fast they had to finish up the projects in the past 2 3 years um now the outcome of this is where we now get the calls from the clients is that this is not working panels are falling off uh, buildings are not operational so now they they see the hit back and how much now they actually have to invest back in that building because they only saw the investment cost in the beginning of the project from what they get from the cost consultant and what they're trying to achieve so um it's by virtue of god's grace and of <laughs> failures they are now resonating to the fact ah somebody told me that i should have actually listened so what do you have to say ani you're on the okay, same consultant page but, but i i i don't know what you said is uh, correct uh, amit that that somebody is learning the lesson unfortunately i have to say that this the other way around always when the dollar signs goes around then and people start to get actually a kind of compromise yeah. often i mean i probably because uh, susan is also coming from the same uh, fee or we are together in the same consultancy probably uh, we are having the same kind of uh, thinking there it is i i have to say that most of the most of the time the failure is uh, failure is happening because of because of the the deficiency of the budget that you really allocate for the execution of the facade <laughs> uh, what you see when you the whole thing when you look at it 
in the initial stage of the development, you have the if you look at the architect, he want to have the most beautiful building. A client want to have the best quality and all that stuff. But later, when it goes to the execution, it is execution is done by the contractor, and contractor basically more their their obvious their priority would be the the commercial part. So if you if you cut the edges at the initial stages. And when you look at the market, uh, the competition is so much that there, I, I'm not very sure if the price what is coming in the market is really after evaluating what is the material cost and it is not really, then a company A and B is having the competition, it is actually between them. You know, they, no, they are not really looking back and see that what is my cost and everything. Anis, so if, if, you are, if you were to recommend to the client, what is it that you please do going forward in projects? What is it that you're going to say? If, even, even we have started now with the, uh, the clients that initially, when we start with the project, we ask what is your budget first. Then we start with the, we start sketching just once you say that, what is the budget? Because very often what happens is actually certain extent you go, then you come to know that there is not really, but I'm not talking generally. I'm talking at least in some cases, this is what we are seeing. Uh, so what happens, the fabricators try, try to cut the edges. So there need to be a, a, a sufficient fund given to them. That is one aspect that I would say. Second matter, what I would say is actually just imagine for our own imagination, consider that there is from the early concept onwards, if there is somebody who has the possibility of taking the client all the way from zero to the hundred, that is the ideal situation. So whenever you assign somebody as a specialist, I would say that if just imagine you, you are going in the tender process, you are having a fabricator. Imagine for a moment that the fabricator has got a probably a skill issue. Uh, then uh, if your consultant has the possibility of actually taking the responsibility of further guiding them in terms of execution, I'm talking not, in, not only on the guidance, in terms of the execution itself. This will be the ideal situation, which we would recommend these two things uh, one is spending enough or keeping at least a, a proper allocation, a decent size uh, uh, fund budget. Second is actually really assigning somebody who's, who can take the responsibility from zero to 100 all the way through. These two are, are the you, major matters that we have the experience. Are you saying that the consultant should presume, assume responsibility of the project from end to start to end? N not really, because the consultant is basically a guide. You know, so right. in, in guidance, uh, you don't have really a responsibility playing, but you can keep them responsible. For example, if you have initial stage, if you have made the concept development and further all the tender and everything is a, that you have produced, if the engineering uh, time, if you have the people who has designed earlier along with you as a, a client, you have the possibility of always making them to do what they have done, to continue with the same thing, what they have done earlier. At this point of time, that doesn't happen, right? That doesn't happen. At this point of, the, at this point of time, what happens is actually, uh, you have a certain stage in the pre-tender phase, you are having a consultant. And most dangerous <laughs> thing is during the tender phase, you don't have anybody, a specialist along with you. You are looking only the number and then you are deciding on that. That is an unfortunate thing. Uh, that is the time that you normally need to have somebody, a specialist to really, really, really separate between between you know an apple and an orange, really to say that the what consultant, is the consultant becomes an MYOB, mind your own business. Exactly. <laughs> I'm sorry to say that, but if that is the <laughs> case, but but taking this to Miguel as a fabrication, what is your wish list from the client? What do you want him not to tell you to do? Well, in, in line as uh, Anib was <laughs> saying, uh, we need to modulate clients uh, requirement with architectural intent with the cost and uh, we need to do it in a continuous base uh, the, the work of the, the facade consultant cannot be stopped and then retake it after six months when the construction is started those gaps are critical uh, and are critical because they are affecting directly to, to the project on the more critical point when they did the selection of the contractors, uh, with the selection of the materials, all these kind of things, no? So we need to be in the process in a continuous way from the early beginning of the concept uh, to the construction stage, uh, as uh, in, any, in any way. Um, giving support on the, on the installation, uh, giving support on the uh, solutions. Otherwise, uh, 
all the work that has been done before is um, in many cases uh, useless. So would it be right to and, say that? Would it be right to say that at this point of time, still, in spite of knowing what's the right way to work, there is still a culture of closed door meetings and not open office meetings where everybody can discuss everything together. So there's always a hidden agenda somewhere. Is there? Sometimes, yes, it happens uh, uh, because uh, you are not uh, being told a hundred percent of the story. <laughs> 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 no, and then you you come you came to to know it uh, after the the work is finished. <laughs> I know your heart, I know your heart wants to stay more, but that will be contempt. Douglas, what is your thought on this subject? You used a very nice word as we started about you know expectations and the client. Yeah, correct. Yeah. So since everyone since everyone is talk about the money and then uh, we are talking about the uh, uh, finger pointing culture, let's um. Let's uh, have these uh, suggestions to the client. If you want to have a successful project, first, find a good QS then. <laughs> find a good QS to give you a good cost estimation for the entire project. Don't give, uh, don't give a false hope to you. <laughs> first, okay, first of all. And then uh, after that, okay, yeah, so this is the first thing that I can think of. The next thing is, um, instead of we talk about the failure, yeah, which is, this is our first topic, let's talk about one of my most happiest project ever in my entire life. Um, it was in, the, in Macau and it was, uh, it was uh, for a casino. Yeah, so for the people here, it's a bit about it's a casino. I'm sorry about that one, but I just tell you the fact. Yeah, so it's a, I, I was responsible for the, uh, for the job in a casino in uh, Macau, which is um, uh, when the time that I built a casino, that's already have a... I have a record of, uh, of the first casino built in Macau. They only used nine months in order to complete the entire turnover. So, so, the, so, the, so the developer, so investing money, nine months to fully recover it. And after that, all of them is, uh, is the income. So everyone is crazy. Everyone wants to be built a startup meeting. The first, things, uh, the first thing on the table is say, guys, is the money enough for you to run this project? Yeah, this is the first one. And then, uh, and then you actually, uh, oh yeah, it's a, it's a pretty good deal. And then, uh, and then, uh, so uh, everyone, no matter from the main contractor, subcontractor, the consultants, architect, they have a full financial as uh, a full support. No matter the financial and then the and and also the uh, decision making approach, is uh, having the full support from the client. So they have a regular meeting. And then the client is uh, sitting in front of the everyone, and everyone is a uh, very open-minded talk about the problem, uh, and then uh, and then uh, also they are solving in an important way. So most importantly, the one of the most tight resources in the all projects money is not an issue in the project. So eventually, that's the things that come so fast, and then at the con uh, and then the and then the uh, consultant say, hey, uh, uh, Mr. Contractor, you have to do like this one because of. Uh, 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 because we have a test requirement, whatever. I say, no problem. Okay, we will do that one. Can we do more? Yeah, we, we can do three, four more. Yeah, it's a, even not talk about the variation because they have full money support from, uh, from their back. Yeah, at the same time, the client say, ah, I want that one particular build faster. Yeah, can you do it enough? And then uh, the, the, uh, the contractor say, ah, this is the maximum productivity that I can get. But, uh, but the client immediately, can you give more production line for me? And then they say, oh, yeah, no problem. And then after, immediately they find another helper for, uh, for uh, another production line for them and do it together. So first, resources-wise is uh, really reasonable and, uh, in, uh, and the extent is uh, excessive. Number two, this is um, as a very open approach of the, uh, all, uh, all the problem. So I think this is the two major actions that make that project to become very happy. Yeah, so unfortunately, that is the only project that I'm working uh, so far that having this scenario. All the other ones, yeah, fighting, yeah, finger pointing, unfortunately, yeah, so. <laughs> <laughs> so the good thing is at least you have one out of whatever number. At least one, <laughs> at least one, <laughs> at least one. <laughs> right, so one is better than zero, right? Correct, at least one. <laughs> I'm, I'm looking forward to another one, yeah. Raja, here you are, the client, uh, and... And then Douglas walks up to you and he says, dude, I've learned from my story in Hong Kong, in Macau, that the client comes and says, is this money enough? And then everything 
becomes a fairy tale Disneyland. <laughs> yeah, inside. But, <laughs> yeah. he says, but he also says that only happened once in my life. So what yeah. what would you like to say, Raja, on that? Yeah, we don't run diplomatic. Run. Yeah, just speak. Yeah, we do, we don't run casinos. You know, we do, we can't fund too much. <laughs> oh, sorry, sorry, Dad. Yeah. Oh, oh. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> There is a hey, can I can I can I add one more story there? Can I add just one more story regarding why casino can so so kind regarding money? Yeah. So as um uh, uh this is the, the people telling me. So in the every month end, so the uh so the people paying the salary to the workers, okay, yeah, so they pay in cash. Yeah, so so eventually the people come with the lorry truck with the, all the cash, yeah, paper, yeah, currency. Okay, yeah, you this you go, this one you go, you go. And eventually, the whole bunch of these workers with cash, immediately they will go to the casinos. Yeah, not casino, you know. <laughs> Imagine. <laughs> <laughs> After a few days, they all come out. <laughs> <continue their work>. <laughs> <laughs> so you can pay more. <laughs> uh, that all right. Pointed. You should tell Shoba to build the first casino in the UAE, the Shoba <laughs> Casino. That's right. Uh, yeah. Listen, I'm just getting uh, inspiration. Maybe advice that you should open a casino for. Let, let me let me project to the board. You know, good business model. <laughs> but that still uh, lets you have an answer to this question with respect to uh, the point that Douglas has very correctly made: Is this money enough? Yep. See, always there there should be a balance. So what we do uh, from the architectural perspective, how early we get involved in the building. So if somebody is making a fully glass building, okay, we can go and ask, okay, there are a lot of value engineering in that stage. So mostly the value engineering, the word is underrated, you know, it's a sort of discount. We, I'm not talking about only a discount. Okay, I can go and tell my client, okay, you, can, you can't afford a unitized panel here. Instead, because there is a spandrel involved, there's a fire stop involved, you go for a, uh, window wall system okay you can have a full view rather you can slab you can cover it it will be cheaper and faster so if a qualified facade consultant is involved not only on the design as well as all the phases of the project definitely this is going to make a big difference i feel uh, in terms of but of course always the money there is a scarcity but we need to work around that not by just using the contractor or uh, getting in the l1 uh, it will not work so client has to have sufficient uh, uh, decent budget and then you need to have very clear expectations also i will i will just add a one minute of a very non relatable story but it's relative to making a decision it's about buying diamonds and i think probably you guys would have bought it for your mates and or suzanne you would have got somebody to gift you a few diamond but there's a story about maybe 10 12 years ago when i went to buy a, a solitaire and I have a very close friend who's one of the biggest jewelers in Delhi. And I have a very close childhood friend who's also a reasonable sized jeweler in the city. So I've, I went first to the big guy and I said, dude, I want to buy blah, 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 solitaire. He's like, okay, here's the deal. I'm going to tell you a story. He said, okay, here is this whatever color, J, blah, blah, blah. And this diamond will cost you, let's say hypothetically, $10,000. And this is going to be put into this ring. And that's the end of story. You see it, you like it, you really like it. What you'll do, and I will tell you, Take this diamond and go to your best friend, your childhood friend, and show him that piece of solitaire. And he will tell you, you went to X guy? Yeah. He told you that this is going to cost you $10,000. I said, yeah. And he will say, I'll give it the same damn thing for $8,000. I said, okay. He said, go do it. Because you know, you both are good friends of mine. Do it. And I didn't know what to do. So I went to my other friend and I said, hey, dude. He said, yeah, this guy sent you. Now he's given you this bullshit story and blah, blah, blah. I'm a little foxed and confused. And I said, okay, here's the deal, my friend. I will buy this, what you showed me from you, provided that it's the same thing and I'm going to keep this as a relative sample. Anyways, to cut the long story short, after uh, a week when I went back to pick up that particular diamond, it wasn't the same. So the cost of buying a cheaper product was only 10-15% mm. and the right product, which I liked at first instance. So they say the cost of buying something you probably make a nice building. It might cost you 10 million, 20 million, whatever. It doesn't matter. You'd probably just save a couple of million, but you will not get the satisfaction of good quality. So the essence for me, for everything that I do in my life, build businesses to build products to everything is to make sure that the saving that we are talking about is minor. Yeah. yeah. The whole relative situation, exactly. if Panis is 
if you get my point of the diamond story that yeah. saving is minus but satisfaction is nil no yeah so a, i think a, a compromise to cost is not the competitive cost you know this is the com- com- when you compromise there are things that somebody need to cut here and there right this is how it is but the big question is why everybody still does it it's natural it's not that this is not about facade or cladding or facade consulting let's say for example and this is stupid but between suzanne's company and and prideman and there's a competition and then the client is screwing both of you and saying dude this is the fees now how do you articulate between a 1.25 to a 1.45 i mean there is no articulation no. correct but then everybody takes that jump or pamas the lisa competing with xyz and then the difference is 100000 50000 or yeah. whatever and and then douglas coming with the story is like i remember the movie from tom cruise uh, where show me the money and i remember that uh, favorite uh, but anyways i think uh, first of all thank you very much for your candid and douglas thank you for your beautiful stories i we have all enjoyed them and i think i i take a take as a small summary of the discussion today i think everything boils down to having to work in a more transparent less ego way where the client is requested to trust his consultant and the consultant to trust the client so actually it's both ways mm-hmm. and for the two of them to trust the contractors who are involved in the projects it's difficult it's bloody difficult because everybody has a mindset that guy says i don't like this guy he says i don't like this guy and that's where the whole story starts but i think for the essence of a project to be completed and for us to be good human beings to contribute positively to society is to ensure that we leave our egos aside and make sure that we listen to each other and i think with all of you with such amazing expertise it's only understood that when you go to a doctor and he says something you listen to him mm-hmm. and you went to a doctor because he had the expertise or she had the expertise and i think that's what's missing everybody thinks they are the doctors themselves which is also the reality of love uh, life and as douglas says no forced hope douglas i like this word no forced hope and i learned when i studied abroad that hope is not a strategy <laughs> so it it doesn't work <laughs> it doesn't work like that but i think to be realistic uh, and not finger pointing is the right way uh, we as wfm community would like to spread this message to the whole community that please work <clears throat> there's enough expertise there are building standing tall for the last i think maybe more than 40 years in the world we can learn from the good experiences and probably learn that it wasn't right and listen to the experts sitting right here um, i would just like a closing remark from each one of you if you have anything to add uh, suzanne again we start the round with you uh, i would like to add to your uh, money story just um, if you if you buy cheap you buy twice this is what Please. my brother always oh. tells me <laughs> yeah. I think that yeah. the um applies to like every industry or even for your personal items if you buy cheap you get what you what you pay for and you if you go cheap you have to buy twice yeah Anish yeah I, let me sell my service a little bit then <laughs> <laughs> right if you, if you if you if you don't have a specialist with you from the beginning itself you are uh, tend to have problem at the later stage so it is better to have a specialist always along with you who has the possibility of taking you through from all the 0 to 100 uh, all the way with a full trust uh, there really uh, the, the the money that you probably you might need to spend is actually not that significant at all compared to what normally you will spend and as uh, susan said again that doing twice definitely is something that you will look for not even twice at times at times what happens is that you need to go two step backward to come for the front work right. you know, this is also happening so this is what i want to say douglas uh if there's uh, any casino in uae let me know yeah <laughs> <laughs> that's that for you uh, <laughs> and that's um <laughs> <laughs> and then um uh yeah uh, to uh, to have a close remark is um uh remember that we are um I work in a uh, Disney land yeah and then uh, at that time I have um uh, I have my manager he gave me one word which is um up to now I'm still talk about this at um uh the construction or engineering is a uh, technical is always not the issue it's always come from humans yeah it's human humans create the issue so 
you have to be a good man, you have to be an honest man, and then uh, and the good things will come. I totally agree with you, brother. Not 1,000%. I think it's all human. <clears throat> uh, Miguel? For me, uh, as a conclusion, I can say, uh, as a Fasad consultant, uh, we have to be trustable and we, we need to make the clients to use us. Uh, they are paying us and they need to uh, feel uh, the, the, they need to be comfortable with us. They need to use us. They need to ask any question, even the smallest question. There are no stupid questions. And uh, that is what uh, builds a relation that is last in time uh, and in the success of the project. Raja. See, facade contracting and construction still being an unorganized industry, as what I agree with Anish, uh, there should be some specialist from the pre bid till the handover process. Though there is a lot of human skills involved, there could be a uh, qualified uh, fabricator or installer also make make mistakes. If there is a qualified consultant is there throughout the process, if at all if they face any problems, it can handheld and. Uh, finish and take some responsibility if the synergies are good i think that would be the ideal uh, project and there are a few projects i would not say that not every project is like you know consultant and architect and uh, uh, fabricator is um, fighting among each other it's not the case so that would be the ideal situation i think we should strive to work towards that I think having said that, there are a few consultants sitting right here, sir. You yeah. can actually take them on and whenever you want, you can get started. With that, thank you very much for your time, uh, lady and gentlemen. It was very, very nice. I hope I hope I was not able to bore you that much when I thought that I would. And I think the audience would feel the same way. Uh, take care in the Middle East. Uh, you've had too many people holiday there, so be careful. And uh, and we shall circle back again in six months' time and see where we have reached. <laughs> and we can talk about some nice successes out of this small discussion. Thank you, Amit. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank, you. you too. Bye -bye. Thank you very much. Thank you. It's been a pleasure. Thank you. Bye-bye. Ciao, Miguel. Thank you.